What if I told you that China is constructing the world's largest hydropower dam at over 10,000 feet in the Himalayas on a river that becomes India's lifeline, giving Beijing control over water supplies for 130 plus million people downstream? It sounds like geopolitical nightmare, right? Well, China is actually building this megastructure right now, and what happens next is so shocking that it's reshaping the balance of power across all of Asia while creating the most controversial infrastructure project in human history. But here's what makes this story truly explosive. This isn't just about electricity, it's about water control as a strategic weapon that could determine the fate of entire nations. Picture this. You're standing on a construction site in the Himalayas at an elevation higher than most mountains in Europe. The air is thin, making every breath laborious. The temperature drops to 30 degrees Celsius at night. Yet around you, thousands of workers and hundreds of pieces of massive construction equipment are carving into solid rock, building what will become humanity's largest hydropower facility. This is the Yalong Tsangpo Mega Dam Project, officially unnamed and barely acknowledged by Chinese authorities, yet visible in satellite imagery as one of the most massive construction operations on Earth. When completed, this single facility will generate 60 gigawatts of electricity, making it three times larger than the Three Gorges Dam and producing more power than most countries consume annually. But the electricity is just the beginning of the story. The real power of this dam lies in its location, on the Yalong Changpo River in Tibet, just before it flows into India, where it becomes the Brahmaputra, one of Asia's mightiest rivers. This geographic position gives China unprecedented control over water flowing to over 130 million people in India and Bangladesh who depend on the Brahmaputra for survival. The scale is almost incomprehensible. The reservoir will flood 2,800 square kilometers, an area larger than Luxembourg. The dam structure will stand over 200 meters high and stretch several kilometers across one of the world's deepest river gorges. The volume of concrete being poured exceeds that used to build several major cities combined. The construction challenges are unlike anything attempted in engineering history. At 10,000 plus feet elevation, workers face altitude sickness, extreme cold, and logistical nightmares of transporting massive equipment to locations accessible only by newly built mountain roads. The seismic activity in the tectonically active Himalayas requires engineering solutions never before tested at this scale. But perhaps most shocking are the geopolitical implications. India and Bangladesh, downstream countries with no say in the project, face potential catastrophe if China decides to reduce water flow during dry seasons or release excess water during monsoons. The dam gives Beijing leverage over South Asia that no military force could provide control over the literal lifeblood of hundreds of millions of people International water law provides little protection as the Brahmaputra crosses international boundaries without any water-sharing treaty between China, India and Bangladesh. China's upstream position means it can build whatever it wants without legal constraints, leaving downstream nations powerless to prevent projects that could devastate their water security. The project challenges fundamental assumptions about sovereignty, development rights and international cooperation. Can one nation's development come at the cost of another nation's survival? When do infrastructure projects become weapons? How can the international community address water conflicts that could spark regional wars? But to understand why China is building what might be history's most controversial dam, we need to understand both China's energy needs and the strategic value of controlling Asia's water tower, the Tibetan Plateau. China faces enormous energy demands from its massive economy and population. Despite building more renewable energy capacity than any other nation, China still struggles to meet electricity needs while reducing carbon emissions from coal power. Hydropower represents clean energy that can provide baseline power that solar and wind cannot reliably deliver. The Tibetan Plateau, often called Asia's water tower, is the source of most major rivers flowing through South and Southeast Asia. The Yangtze Yellow River, Mekong, Salween, Indus Ganges, and Brahmaputra all originate from glaciers and snowmelt in Tibet. 
This geographic reality gives China control over water resources affecting over 2 billion people across multiple countries. The Yalong Changpo River represents perhaps the greatest untapped hydropower potential on Earth. The river drops over 2,000 meters in elevation through the Great Bend of the Changpo, the world's deepest canyon, before entering India. This dramatic elevation change creates ideal conditions for generating enormous amounts of electricity from water flow that's both powerful and consistent year-round from Himalayan glacial melt. Chinese engineers have studied the Yalong Changpo for decades, producing detailed surveys and feasibility studies for multiple dam sites along the river. The current mega dam project represents the culmination of this planning, a facility designed to harness maximum power from the river's dramatic descent while creating a massive reservoir that could store water for release during peak demand periods or withhold water during conflicts. The strategic implications become clear when examining China's relationship with India. The two nations share a disputed border in the Himalayas, have fought wars in the past, and maintain tense relationships characterized by military standoffs and competing regional influence. Water control provides China with leverage that requires no military action. Simply adjusting dam operations could create devastating impacts downstream. For India, the Brahmaputra is essential. The river provides water for agriculture feeding millions, supports fisheries that sustain local economies, enables transportation across northeastern India, and maintains ecosystems that millions depend on. Major Indian cities, including Guwahati, rely on the Brahmaputra for drinking water and industrial needs. Bangladesh faces even greater vulnerability. The country sits at the delta where the Brahmaputra and Ganges meet before flowing into the Bay of Bengal. Any reduction in water flow could cause saltwater intrusion that would devastate agriculture and contaminate drinking water supplies. Bangladesh, one of the world's most densely populated countries, has few alternatives if the Brahmaputra's flow is significantly reduced. The construction challenges for the Yalong Changpo Dam exceed those faced by any previous hydropower project. The extreme elevation creates logistical nightmares as all materials and equipment must be transported over newly built mountain roads that cross some of Earth's most difficult terrain. The thin air at high altitude reduces equipment efficiency while making human labor exhausting. Temperature extremes complicate construction as materials must withstand 30 degrees C winters and summer temperatures that can exceed 30 degrees C. The freeze-thaw cycles stress concrete and metal in ways that lower elevation projects never experience. Special concrete mixtures and construction techniques have been developed specifically for high altitude conditions. Seismic risks present perhaps the greatest engineering challenge. The Himalayas are among Earth's most seismically active regions as the Indian tectonic plate continues colliding with Asia, creating the world's highest mountains while generating frequent earthquakes. The dam must withstand tremors that would destroy conventional structures while maintaining integrity through the massive seismic events that periodically rock the region. Environmental concerns extend beyond geopolitical water issues. The dam will flood pristine Himalayan valleys destroying unique ecosystems found nowhere else on Earth. Species endemic to the region will lose habitat, potentially driving some to extinction. The reservoir will submerge ancient cultural sites sacred to Tibetan Buddhism. Downstream ecological impacts could be catastrophic. The Brahmaputra's seasonal floods naturally fertilize agricultural lands and replenish wetlands essential for bird migration and fisheries. Dam operations that reduce flood peaks or increase dry season flows will alter ecosystems that evolved over millennia to depend on natural flow patterns. Sediment transport represents another critical issue. The Brahmaputra carries enormous amounts of sediment from Himalayan erosion. This sediment builds the Bangladesh Delta while naturally fertilizing agricultural lands. The dam will trap sediment, potentially starving downstream areas of the geological processes that maintain their landscapes while filling the reservoir at rates that could reduce the dam's operational lifetime. International law provides little framework for resolving conflicts over shared rivers. No comprehensive treaty governs the Brahmaputra, and China has historically opposed international water agreements that might limit its development options. India and Bangladesh 
have protested the dam project, but possess no legal mechanism to prevent or modify China's plans. Climate change adds another dimension of complexity. Himalayan glaciers are melting rapidly due to global warming, altering the long-term water supply for all rivers sourced from the Tibetan Plateau. The dam could help manage increasingly variable water flows, but it also concentrates control over diminishing water resources in a single nation's hands. By 2020, satellite imagery confirmed massive construction operations at the dam site. Chinese state media, which had remained silent about the project for years, finally acknowledged plans for the world's largest hydropower facility without providing detailed specifications or addressing international concerns. The international response to China's Yalong Changpo Mega Dam has revealed the limitations of current international systems for managing transboundary water conflicts. India's protests have been diplomatic, but largely ineffective. Bangladesh, with even less geopolitical leverage, can do little beyond expressing concern. Scientific assessments of potential impacts paint alarming scenarios. Hydrological models suggest that even minor changes to Brahmaputra flow patterns could affect millions of people downstream. During dry seasons when water is already scarce, any reduction in flow could create humanitarian crises. During monsoons when flooding is already dangerous, increased releases from the dam could exacerbate disasters. Agricultural impacts could be devastating for both India and Bangladesh. The Brahmaputra's natural flooding cycle deposits nutrient-rich sediment on agricultural lands. This natural fertilization has supported farming for millennia. Dam operations that alter flood timing or intensity will affect crop yields for millions of subsistence farmers who have no alternatives. Fisheries face existential threats from changed flow patterns and temperatures. The Brahmaputra supports massive fish populations that provide protein for millions of people. Changes to seasonal flooding that fish species depend on for spawning could collapse fisheries that sustain local economies. The geopolitical implications extend beyond water issues. China's dam demonstrates that controlling upstream water sources provides strategic advantages that conventional military power cannot match. Other nations with upstream positions on international rivers are studying the Yalong Changpo project as a potential model for their own strategic infrastructure. Turkey's dams on the Tigris and Euphrates rivers demonstrate similar dynamics, with downstream Iraq and Syria largely powerless to prevent Turkish water projects that affect their water security. Ethiopia's Grand Renaissance Dam on the Nile has created tensions with downstream Egypt that have brought the nations close to conflict. The Mekong River presents another case where China's upstream dams affect multiple Southeast Asian nations with limited ability to influence Chinese water management decisions. The pattern suggests a future where water control becomes a primary tool of international power projection. Climate adaptation strategies must now account for the reality that water availability is increasingly controlled by political decisions rather than natural hydrological cycles. Nations downstream from major rivers must develop contingency plans for scenarios where upstream nations reduce water flow for strategic or economic reasons. International institutions have proven inadequate for managing these conflicts. The United Nations has no enforcement mechanisms for compelling upstream nations to consider downstream impacts. International water law remains largely aspirational, with few binding agreements and fewer still enforcement mechanisms. Regional organizations lack authority to mediate water disputes between member nations. ASEAN cannot compel China to share Mekong water management decisions. SEARC has been unable to create India-Bangladesh-China water cooperation on the Brahmaputra. The Yalung Tsangpo Dam may reshape how the international community approaches transboundary water management. The project's scale and implications are forcing recognition that current systems are inadequate for 21st century water challenges where climate change, population growth, and infrastructure development combine to create conflicts that existing frameworks cannot resolve. Technical solutions exist for mitigating downstream impacts. Data sharing about dam operations could allow downstream nations to prepare for flow changes. Agreed minimum flow requirements could ensure basic water security. Joint management commissions could balance upstream development with downstream needs.
but implementing such solutions requires cooperation that currently doesn't exist. China has rejected proposals for formal water-sharing agreements, arguing that such arrangements would limit its sovereign development rights. Downstream nations lack leverage to compel Chinese cooperation beyond diplomatic appeals. Economic interdependence provides potential leverage as India and Bangladesh are significant trade partners with China. But threatening economic retaliation over water issues risks escalating disputes beyond water management to broader trade conflicts that could damage all parties. Military options are discussed, but highly dangerous. Any attempt to use force against the dam could spark regional conflict with catastrophic consequences. The dam's location in mountainous terrain makes military action extremely difficult, while China's military superiority in the region deters such considerations. International pressure campaigns have achieved little as China dismisses concerns about the dam as attempts to constrain Chinese development. Chinese officials argue that China has rights to develop its water resources just as downstream nations develop theirs. Today, construction continues at the Yalong Changpo Mega Dam site, with completion projected within the decade. The project will fundamentally alter Asia's geopolitical landscape while demonstrating that 21st century conflicts may be fought with infrastructure rather than armies. From engineering marvel to geopolitical weapon, from clean energy solution to water security threat, from national development to regional crisis, China's Himalayan Megadam represents how infrastructure projects can reshape international relations while demonstrating the inadequacy of current systems for managing conflicts over shared natural resources. The concrete being poured into the Yalong Changpo at 10,000 feet isn't just building a dam, it's constructing a new reality where water control becomes a tool of power that nations must navigate in an increasingly resource-constrained world. What other shared natural resources do you think could become sources of international conflict as nations compete for control over diminishing supplies?